All right, Chris. Now I want to get into some of the coaches who I feel have done an exceptional jobs so far this season. Whether it's guys who have dealt with a rash of injuries and still have their teams in the playoff race, or guys who just got off to an unexpected hot start and just kind of kept that train rolling. So I'm gonna get into it. And you should have the same list as me unless you on some other what? stuff. What? Of course I'm not going to have the same list as you. But anyways, <laughs> go ahead. I, I appreciate your opinion. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to just go ahead and throw these names off, and then we're going to rock to it. Number three, John Gruden with the Oakland Raiders. Number two, Mike Tomlin with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And number one, John Harbaugh with the Baltimore Ravens. What you got? I mean, I'm not I'm not mad at any of those. I like them all. I really do. Uh -huh. I still think, okay, there, there's one. I'm, I'm still going to say Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he's he in that conversation. Yeah. He's I'm you know, for me. Is, right. And, you know, they were undefeated until just this past Monday night. So that's been a phenomenal coaching job. We still got questions about the corner, quarterback. His first year, they started out 0-10, and, and we were mm -hmm. going, uh-oh. Man, the 49ers made, made a, a wrong decision hiring him as a head coach. I'm going to throw him in there. Matt LaFleur. Yeah. I'm going to throw him in there, too, because it's not always easy to take over for a Super Bowl winning head coach like Mike McCarthy. And then you got to deal with Aaron Rodgers and everybody talking about, oh, how is he going to handle him? And I just give him a lot of credit for checking his ego at the door and working with Aaron Rodgers and the yeah. whole audible thing and all that crap we heard in the offseason. Right. Well, they hashed it out, and they're working because they're 8-2. and two. And i tell you why John Harbaugh leads it for me versus the winning coaches like uh, Matt LaFleur um, and uh, uh, Shanahan. It's because he was willing to do what a lot of folks weren't. Like, he embraced I, Lamar Jackson's athleticism. Like, I feel like when we saw Mike Vick back in the day, they were trying to turn Vick into a pocket quarterback. Like, nah, he's like, Lamar, you're one of the best running quarterbacks that I've ever seen. We're going to use that to our advantage. And then we saw just last week in the Bengals game where he's throwing spin moves, the invisible juice on defense. I still think, though, one of the names you already mentioned is the leader in the clubhouse to me overall. Mike Tomlin. Yes. I mean... Come on, just such a great motivator. We got Mason Rudolph. We'll figure out 50 million ways to throw the ball four yards so we make him look good. But and the then one thing I'll that he understands is that defense, out. there you go. Because that's the yeah. one thing the Steelers are always going to lean on, defense, and that's going to be the thing that holds true this year if they're able to continue that success and make it to the playoffs. It's going to ride on that defense and that It is. Rush. The front seven is special. Yeah. Them having the vision and Minka Fitzpatrick playing him in the right position. Defense of MVP been right awesome. now. I want to ask you this though. Do you think they can do you think they can get to the playoffs playing this style of football? I mean, it's tough to do what they're doing. Basically playing through the defense on a week to week basis. I mean, we've Very seen tough it done way. on a couple of occasions. I mean, you remember that Baltimore defense when they had Trent Dilfer at quarterback where you just lean heavily on the run game. And the defense just says, hey, you're just not going to score more points than us. And I think the Steelers, with Minka Fitzpatrick on the back end, now Joe Hayden's playing better. They're able to stop the run. They're able to pressure the quarterback when they can play from a lead. So I think if the game script and the game flow is in their favor, Pittsburgh is going to be one of the most dangerous teams. And I think my last name I'm going to throw out is Vrabel in Tennessee because Tannehill has done an amazing job. Obviously, you give a lot of credit to that Titans offensive line and Derrick Henry and being able to run the ball. But Tannehill has done enough for them to win the game that yeah. Defense is starting to come along now, and they're right there in the mix of that race for the AFC South. And so I believe Vrabel making that tough decision midstream in order to insert Tannehill in that team and inject life into a team is another decision maker head coach that is probably flying a little bit underneath the radar but deserves a lot of credit. You're right. No doubt. Never easy to bench the number two pick of the draft who's supposed to be your face of the franchise. Right. And Ryan Tannehill, you're right, just gives them enough on offense and makes enough plays to where you're a little scared of the Titans once again when you see them pull off a victory like they did last week against the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, all these guys are neck and neck. It's going to be interesting to see who pulls away with the race. It's going to be fun yeah, to watch. It is. It's going to be a good year, a good discussion. Yeah.